Thank you very much for the intro. Thank you for your decision to move forward. So this highly educational value. So I would like to elaborate on what Nadia has just said. Well, something is wrong there, but okay, whatever. What do you mean? It's, uh, it's Vadim's TV set, so just blame him. Right, so the main message here is the hosting organization of this event requires a lot of resources, fairly decent resources. And this is the question how to balance out quality, the capacity to run similar events, and at the same time, implementing some, some viable business model, some adequate business model that would facilitate not just uh, receiving some profit to the organizers, so that the organizers, the hosting party, would be motivated, but also for the speakers. Well, we're used to teachers at school who are just running around butt naked. I mean, they're, they're paid peanuts. We don't want this kind of story to repeat itself with, uh, with blockchain education. Even the tickets to meetups, to similar events, to workshops, the sales of, the of these tickets will be through open auction. So it could be very strong fluctuations. If it's high demand, yes, there will be high price of the, uh, of the, of the tickets. If there is no demand, the, the, the entry will be for free. The market will tell us. So uh, the share from this auction, so the, the money generated from these auctions will be split between the speakers and the hosting, so the hosts. So we, we, we want people to come here not just because they want to share knowledge, but ultimately, so here, why not if we can? So this, this kind of attitude, this kind of philosophy that we want to pursue here. So this is the principal method, message. message on, Nadia was pretty eloquent with the main mechanics in running the auctions against the uh, ERC 7 to 1. This token, the winnings, uh, can be received as an ENS, some small number of Ethereum coins. And these coins will be repaid uh, on the condition that the person has checked, has self checked in. All those voting things, those voters, it's uh, more of a flesh on the bones. Votings and the resulting payouts. So the biggest challenge that we want to address is the no-shows. We want to fight those. Well, checking in is an important thing that shows the progression, the movement uh, of the event towards a more quality audience, better quality audience. So that's as far as Cyber Academy is concerned. If there are any questions, so we're not going anywhere, so me and Nadia can take them right here off the bat. No questions. Is that right? No questions. So it's either so bad or it's very good. Right, so we're showing right now how it's happening. The speaker with a laptop, it's put on here. The next presentation to be voiced, well, it's a pilot gathering, not exactly the KDB format. Let me tell you about the roots of our Developers Congress. And then Valera will tell you about search. I know that his presentation was not recorded in Kiev, so we'll update it very quickly for search. And right now, what's, what do I have here? It's 4K, right? Awesome. So you need to be in sync with the TV set uh, resolution.
Just a second, a small technical hiccup. Let me work on the connection. It's 4K, the resolution of the TV set, hence the issues with, with my screen. Okay. Enjoying the benefit of being a new person here, I'll ask a question that many know uh, the answer to. It's an event platform that you're putting together, right? So again, the education comes through speakers that speak at the events. So coming here to Cyber Academy, I thought it would be more like a developer school, where this education will be happening through events. Well, there will be some programs of software. Well, Academy is a kind of a collective image. <laughs> yes, so I'm, a, I'm a rector of this Academy. The Academy is kind of figurative for us. It is, it is a figurative notion. There is an issue with certification, with uh, proving qualification of experts. So let's issue certificates right there. The diplomas, but it's it's not the objective. Sharing knowledge is what we're about. So when you're accumulating, when you gain knowledge from the practical experts, uh, this will be a more of a hands-on thing. Yes, there will be events, there will be educational content that we're accumulating. Uh, the academy will be on YouTube. The events would be more about fun and anarchy. <laughs> to generate as much decent quality content as possible through meetups. Yeah, it's, it's that simple. Right, so I'm a bit anxious still. Cyber Congress. Why we created it. Why it's needed. And so on and so forth. So my presentation would not be that technical. I'll be sharing my expertise over the past five years regarding blockchain projects organization. Literally, recently, me, Valera and Gleb, this, this guy here is Gleb, have a look at him. So me, Valera and Gleb established a new company. And as a result of this new company, we started a certain project in GitHub, so based on GitHub. In a nutshell, it's just one markdown file uh, that has three pages on it. And we described it, who we are, what we're about, why us, and why we exist. I believe it's highly important when you're endeavoring in a new venture to do some kind of description like that. Because I've had this story with Cyberfund. I've had this uh, story, very vibrant example, very vibrant story. Nice and vivid. So in that agreement, I tried to take into account all the mistakes I've made uh, when entering the Cyberfund. So I want to tell about that right now. So the story, I started interrupting my own docs to know where it's coming from. I went to Google Drive and I started seeing what why those documents are. So I've pulled out this Cyberfund IO 2013. We met the guys back then, there's five people. One of them is Vitaly, uh, with whom we're continuing this, this the five combatants that have mined bitcoins on the balcony in 2011. And at some point, we realized uh, that we will, our, our paths will split. We realized that because I've made a presentation. And roughly speaking, Vitaly liked it, and uh, three other people didn't like it. Right, so then I started pulling out some milestone development points, so some milestone developments goals. And I found uh, November 2015, it's a very interesting document, which is signed by me and Marina and uh, Kostya and Vitalik, 
that we uh, dubbed uh, Genesis Agreement. This is Genesis Agreement. So this is the uh, first statutory documents, uh, articles of incorporation that were registered in, on blockchain. So we used it as a basis for some time. And then we realized what the whole mashup was about. So I'll proceed to tell about these issues. It all started on May the 1st, a month ago, when I left uh, Cyberfund. Uh, it was uh, May, the, the May the 1st, uh, 2013, it was five years ago. The first mistake that I clearly saw, we shaved this mission after 23 months post-concept. That's, that's quite a lot, it's almost two years. So as a snowball, it got us to this. Well, not us, but me. For two years, I didn't know what to do. For two years, it took me two years, running around with eyes this wide, or blockchain, yes, so why, what for, these reasons, these answers were missing. So, this Genesis agreement was not exactly describing this. I picked this up from other presentations. And uh, this, those ideas were shaped by the people there. So, indeed, I lost two years on being unable to put, uh, put, put these uh, ideas to practice. Another important bit. Yeah, so, we did not define any long term goals, like at all. Zero long term goals. And I believe uh, this led us to take some spontaneous decisions, some emotional decisions like launching goals. Well, looking back on this thing, I, I don't regret having launched it. It's nice, it's a great thing. But it was not in the format of what we were doing. It was a very big move to the side. In a sideway move. And if we had implemented the things that we were striving towards, I believe we'll be more focused in pursuing our actual goals. But the biggest issue that is obvious to me, we didn't agree on the values, why we're doing this, which basically got us to the station of fork between Cyber Congress and Cyber Academy. There was a fork. So the main message here is lack of shared values. It's highly likely to cause volatile growth. It will be unsustainable with a bunch of forks along the way and so on and so forth. So this third bit, the values, or lack thereof, like lack of agreement of them, so this is something I would like to focus my presentation on. I would like to speak about every value here, hoping that the Congress will not repeat these mistakes. It will lay foundation for further growth. Right, so the first important thing is security. This is what blockchain technology is about. It, not, not just us, all the people around. But the only way to get a certain level of security, to attain a certain level of security, is to avoid traditional paperwork being signed. We have digital mechanisms. And all the agreements, all the arrangements can be executed, not as hard copies, not affected by some control jurisdiction, but may be made as agreements between uh, specific parties. So, we decided that we're not going to work with hard copies, no way, this is not the way to go. We want to make it purely digital, digital paperwork. Second important thing is anonymity is privacy and privacy. The fundamental property of any internet-based system 
is that it allows is the minimum to stay anonymous. And it's stupid when some big company declares themselves as a system or a systemic one, they fail to follow this principle of anonymity. And we decided that if somebody in our team, as a member of the Congress, wants, wishes to stay anonymous, this is their right to do so. Currently, all the team is public. We're all out in front of you. But we agreed on the shore, before we move forward, anonymity is okay. Another important thing, as the cyber fund was developing, we started receiving projects and the code was uh, being closed, it was no longer open, open source. In case with Cyber Congress, we agreed clearly. In if we can close some code which is not even finalized, it's still more or less okay. But if, if it's in production, it's open code, open code, op open source only. Another important bit that we failed to implement in CyberFund is transaction transparency. I believe this is the fundamental property of any community so that all the stakeholders would understand where the money is coming from, where it's going to. In case with Congress, we have public addresses where the money are being moved. And may it be the case. Free will. Free will is a must-have. It's an important bit. It will come in handy. But in the course of the performance, there were non-DAs, non-disclosure non agreements concluded. Which are the bad things is conflict of interest. I'm deeply convinced that uh, this is useful for corporations, how the shareholders of those corporations control, can control our brain. If you want somebody to entitle, if you want to entitle somebody to control your brain, so please uh, sign an NDA and uh, try to avoid conflict of interest. If not, then no. We decided to live free of that, and that's it. Another important point that is very much in line with the previous one is that our goal is to help people who are working in our project, to assist them in switching from salary to revenue on their capital. It's a fundamental switch, it's a fundamental transition. The entire system of government control and corporate control hinges on salaries, on slavery salaries. It's a very bad prospect. So trying to avoid this, trying to get out of this is very challenging. And still, not every company is interested to make it happen for their employees. I'll tell you even more, every company is not interested, expressly not interested to do it for their employees. And we decided that we're going to help guys, well, me personally, I find it much better to work with people who are not afraid to step forward, to say something, to do something because they're convinced, because they're free, because they're independent. It's very interesting to work with partners rather than with mercenaries. The mercenaries or mercs cannot get meaningful stuff done serious challenges is not for them to handle. So we are linked to auctioning here. But we go more than that. We will structure that. We will develop options we will develop option schemes which are not which do not take years but which are incremental, maybe eleven years long ultimately. The main goal of this is to help people help guys switch to passive income, such as capital, rent of capital, something like that. 
Again, in Cyberfun, I wasn't able to pull this off. Well, alas. Right. Another important aspect. This is marketing. Immediately marketing. I believe that marketing is engineering, engineering is marketing. So we clearly identified for ourselves that it's best to spend money on developers that on, a, on some unclear funnels. We have very good mechanics working with drops. We believe this is the future in digital marketing. However, this is one of the fundamental concepts that we try to pursue. Right, so there's much more I can tell you about. So we had this one case when we launched the project uh, called Vox Populi. And then everybody knows what happened next. It didn't fly. The main mistake, which obviously happened, is that we launched the project without thinking about automation of the process. And we decided to not go forward with any project whatsoever unless we clearly understand how to automate it from the time we launched it along the way. But it's not the only one. Lack of automation, the principles in your team well, that's a lot of unmet goals, a lot of unmet indicators, and this is destructive ultimately for everybody. It's best to proceed incrementally. Christina Lente. So these are the values for the future. This is how we try to avoid them designing the Congress. Now I'd like to talk about future values. Yes, I realize this is just empty words. This might sound as empty words for some of you. But trust me when I say it, this is not the case for us. If you check out our repositories, well, it's not just a declaration. It's not just the words for show. It's something that we really stand for and with what we're moving towards. Decentralization. What can I tell about decentralization? It's not a state, it's a process. And there won't be a state when we have decentralized completely. It's an ongoing, incremental, gradual work. So that everything you're doing gets more and more people on board. More and more people are participating in decision making. And therefore, we declare that our key value would be decentralization. It will be our permanent goal, permanent objective. It's not some milestone that we guarantee we will reach inside at some point. Right, another fundamental bit that would have eliminated a lot of discussion in the past. A lot of debates is a statement about economic freedom. That nobody has the right to block transactions, stop them from happening. It's a fundamental thing. It's too bad not, not, not everybody understands that. It's also coupled with informational freedom, because there are cases when regulators believe and they can show something and they can have something forbidden. I believe that this is illegitimate action on their part. The, those efforts are illegal. Not a single regulator is entitled to either block the, the transactions or ban access to the information. Physical liberty, well, through our investment, through our projects. So, looking forward, I've put in this physical liberty principle. It's a difficult thing, but everybody wants that. 
My utmost conviction is that authoritarian tools should not be limited, should not be limiting physical liberty. Any limitations to physical liberty must be economic rather than authoritative. I envisage an issue with open source hardware. There was an issue when I told something about hardware at one of the conferences. The slip of the tongue proprietary hardware uh, is the one that's generating more and more problems. So we decided, I won't be talking about our projects in detail today, but there will be a Cyber Labs project that has an objective of developing open source hardware solutions. And we declare that as one of the, our paramount founding principles. I also believe there will be discrimination against various robots in the future. So we defied intelligence as any entity which can uh, or control its private pool and sign transactions, private keys and uh, sign its transactions, verifiable transactions, to eliminate any discriminate dogmas or what's whatever, aspirations to discriminate against someone. But, well, it's something that we are striving towards, always being on the edge. There are many technologies in use which are outdated. One is email, the, one, the other is DNS. And the third one is IP protocol. So we'll do our utmost to offer alternatives to these sort of things. Right, so what's in the agreement? We have made our written governance. These are all links, you can follow them. Whoever wishes to go there will be able to read it. We have described all the processes in such a way that the list of processes and the functions of the Congress are exceptional. We have defined what we can do and what we cannot. So this is something I recommend to everybody. Look at this list of functions so that you can limit the scope of, what you, of where you want to go, what you want to do. Also, somebody was trying to say that there is some very good congresses, but CEO is, a, is complete bullshit. It's one of the biggest mistakes in the... Oh. So I'm prepared to say out, out front that CEO is complete bullshit, out and out. If you appoint a CEO in your organization, be prepared that something at some point will go wrong. Yes. So, if you leave all of your operational activity to a CEO, so be prepared that something will go entirely wrong and you won't even notice it until it's too late. The controlling mechanism at this point is automated C. It's a very easy way for the developers of the Congress to find an agreement. But this way, this is the way we eliminate any potential possibility that a decision will be made which will run uh, contrary to, to our values. So, now there's some more tips for you. This industry is very hot, there's a lot of cash flowing around, so I will recommend don't touch fiat money completely. Stay away from them. So, cost of money will be very high, because you will need to get lawyers on board, 
как правило, ну, то есть редко, редко можно получить снятые деньги. It's very rare to be able to receive smart money in blockchain, fiat money. So, by definition, fiat money, uh, according to the blockchain philosophy, it's uh, stupid money. So fiat money cannot be smart because they come with legal costs, another cost, and so on and so forth. All this nonsense. So I recommend you should talk about or you should think about your budget, feeding your budget with a blockchain system. And to not be completely... Oh, where's my slide? Right, so I'm missing, I'm missing a slide here that we've eliminated this problem for us through attraction of Ethereum to the Congress. So we've run around 582 Ethereum coins have been collect collected. This will be enough for us to provide what we want to provide. If we are lacking that, we'll run, uh, we'll run another round. If that money runs dry, if those tokens run dry. So another important bit here. Well, this has been a very interesting experiment. Virtually all the team got really on board. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, guys, for, for your engagement into this. Raising the money from the team eliminates many fundamental questions. It's an incentive for the team to go somewhere, to develop something. When you first raise some external money, some third-party money, there is a, the, the possibility that uh, the people, the mercenaries, that you get behind some idea, well, I don't think it's uh, realistic to expect that they will be fighting for this cause with all hands on deck. So we've adopted this path, let's, let's see what happens. This is the most interesting thing. This is an interesting uh, story with uh, me and Kostya. We asked the question, so we have this cyber fund. What can we do with what we own? How do we make sure that something that we've earned in cyber fund, we can buy a plane, a jet on that? So there are shares. Yes, they're kind, of, they're kind of there. There is a business, there is a company, it's kind of there too. But yeah, there's no cash ultimately, so we, we've been working to what end? To what end? Well, that means that there, is no, there are no embedded incentives in our company. So this is how we got there. Uh, Congress is a non-profit for profit uh, entity. I don't think it ever happened in the industry before. Let me proceed to tell you how it works. So it's not a fund, meaning that the Congress will not have any obligations. It's, it's a self-funded it's a self-funded entity. This is the first thing that I need to emphasize. Right, this is this is the slide. It's raised, raised from the team. Well, 582 Ethereum. Yes, this, this is the funding effort. Another important point. We've been thinking about giving some incentive to people on the team, incentivizing the team members to work on something that's in the Congress. So this is the setup we've adopted ultimately. It's uh, uh, Costa's idea. So, when they're dropping the drops. So, many uh, fork for Bitcoin, fork for, fork for Ethereum. So, if you take Cyberfund, this is very serious money that simply dropped from the sky, some food. came out of the blue from the community. It would be stupid to not share that to all those contributing to it. So we decided that 60% of the drops will be left in the Congress. They'll stay in the Congress because the biggest volume of drops will be pumped or use them to pump the tokens which are managed by the Congress. So roughly speaking, if we receive a drop, so we ultimately bring value. We boost the price of the tokens uh, that we want to grow.
What's a drop? A drop, if somebody wants to dump some tokens to a sample of addresses. 20% is sent to the members of the Congress. Another 20% goes to the teams that are working for, uh, to the benefit of the Congress. Unfortunately, I can, I can barely hear the speaker and I cannot hear the questions. Right, so uh, the Congress has no... There are three tokens that I can talk about. But the Congress... Well, guaranteed to have some tokens. We have Ethereum at this point. The projects that we're going to invest, they're going to be there in the Congress. And uh, those tokens uh, that we want to support, uh, the ones I mentioned before. So we want to build an ecosystem of projects where we invest our money and effort. And, uh, well, to give back some of the stuff. So the tokens from your projects. Yes, exactly. Interesting, yeah. Look at those eyes. Okay, why 60-20-20 split? Well, what is, we decided that there are some projects that drop. Well, the so-so projects do drops, and sometimes awesome projects do, do that. So this is the answer to your questions, because we will. If we see the project worthy, if we deem it worthy, and we made this 60% reserves, at least, at no, no more than, at least 40% of tokens, or 50% of tokens will be disbursed, will be sold. So this is the first embedded incentive in the Congress. Another one, oh, so, so the entry is free, the exit is, is going to cost. There are three members in the Congress. And there is this issue, flat voting does not scale up to more than eight people. So if you think that a 20 strong team will have one vote to one person, it will be quick, operational, without any apathy, that's, it's a big it's a big big mistake it's a big misconception so if it grows to more than seven members we decided for ourselves if it's seven plus then we will consider another conceptually different philosophy at this point we can decide to adopt someone into our into our ranks as a member and the main incentive for the congress members would be that at exit or at liquidation, 50% will go to the members and another half will be go to the communities. 25% to the teams, half of that half, and another half to the community, like pump, pump the tokens. Well, that's about it for incentives. The incentives are clear, implementable, and workable. I believe they will promote our growth, com will complying with the right balance between the common cause and the individual interests. Now, a few words about goals. It has a dozen of those very ambitious goals, like terraforming, transforming the Earth. Uh, the names are very cute. The names are fun. Our objective is to build a good, good foundation around this economy. And this is the reason why we want and we will support this project as Cyber Academy. Yes, Nadia, kudos to you for being a part of this story, for leading the way in this story. Plus, we have a library on GitHub where very good papers, where very good articles paperwork uh, that was engendered by the discovery I placed. So please feel free to hit that link and go there. You'll be able to save enormous amounts of your time if you want to approach that issue matter academically and not just to have some light reading on nice, beautiful, colorful page, uh, pictures on the leaflets that ICO projects uh, post for you. The Second goal, where all the focus is channeled towards, is providing 
Access to transactions. It's cyber search project. Valeria will tell you about this after I'm done. Right. So as far as goal number three and onwards are concerned, we will uh, cover them through investment and mentoring help. There are people here from the team that are doing dragons. Yay. No, a strategic investment right there. In potential VR technology and digital genetics. That's our response to crypto kitties. So why are we taking those crypto kitties? So don't don't take them so unseriously. So yes, we plan to uh, do investment, smart investment, to invest into teams, uh, both soul and heart. All the members of the Congress are three people. Most likely it will be personal. I'm, I'm working with some guys personally. So you can ask them how it happens. <laughs> so the lucky one is the one pulling it. Now this is my IPFS presentation. It's, it's available on IPFS. And ultimately, uh, there is a lot of hype around Web3. Nadia tell, uh, asked me to tell you about, I know what this is. So, me and some other guys are working on a prototype on the browser on, for Web3. And I can only promise here at, that at one of those meetups that are coming in the future, I will tell in a workshop format uh, how it's different, how Web2 is different from Web3, how Web3 browser might look like, so it will be kind of a teaser workshop. Well, that's about everything I wanted to say, so any questions? Yes, a round of applause. If there are questions, uh, raise your hand and the microphone. No microphone, no interpretation. Dima, thank you very much. Very clear, very concise, uh, wishing you good luck to your trio, to your endeavor. If there is a cyber academy, there might be uh, cyber academics, uh, cyber academicians, maybe. Uh, so you need to think about that. Yes, it's much easier than that. We have decentralized stuff going on, so no titles, no academicians, titles awarded. Whoever is prepared to lead the way or to pull this, as I've just mentioned, they will be able to do that. Well, essentially, it's very easy, it's very difficult to enroll to an academy, same as any other academy out there. Uh, self, it's worth, worth its salt. Any further questions? Yes. Thank you for the pres presentation, Dima. It sounds very awesome. But there are a couple of questions. So, yes, first of all, why seven, not five members of Congress? Well, I've mentioned that. Eight is the limit. Uh, so, well, the even number of subscribers is impossible. So it's either five or seven. Eight is out of question. So currently, no. Okay, next question. So, decentralization, crypto is very cool, but there is a world we are, we are right here, right now. This electricity might, must be paid for. So, those uh, hard copies abolishing, hard copies abolishing fiat money, how, how can you, how do you want to get rid of them? So, what's your question? No, no, I'm saying that it's not exactly in line with, to what you were, uh, with what you were, telling that you want to be buying cryptocurrency to, in order to, to run events for crypto, uh, for, for cyber academy. So we have the possibility to create the conditions for these projects. And we are in the process right now. That's 
So the Congress can change its local agent. Agent for the performance of uh, for rendering of, uh, certain services. Oh. It's not a middleman, no. It's not exactly a middleman. Somebody who will help us arrange everything in strict compliance with the local legislation. Right. A very burning question. Oh, it's a very good question. Oh, we all know about Microsoft. I'll tell you about my humble opinion. So, my personal opinion is that currently it doesn't make sense to do that. Right now, we're testing Bitcoin. So, what's on there on GitHub? That was the subject matter of the question. Well, GitHub supplies open source. The rest is shipped as boxed. So, there is a painful bit because it's uh, about business processes of specific teams. We are testing Bitcoin to fund some important issues. But we realize that the issues that are funded through Gitcoin uh, oh, so must be an issues explorer. And they can be addressed through Web3. I believe this will lay foundation. If GitHub becomes more well, turns to shit, then we can painlessly transfer our uh, processes to Web3 applications. So no alternatives, no viable alternatives at this point. No viable serious alternatives to GitHub on Web3, Web3 based. So I don't think it's. Uh, makes any point or makes any sense to do it now. Okay, so this Web3 for me is a new word. Does it resolve this? Can you just hold the microphone closer to your mouth? Yes, so you were talking about uh, DNS protocol, other uh, unsuccessful protocols. Does Web3 eliminate uh, all the bottlenecks of those protocols? Well, yes, there is an ENF alternative. As a concept, it's also developing very nicely. So it's uh, too, too early to tell. Because the network stack is very low level. Uh, probably not IPFS with their keys. Uh, well, it might be an alternative, but... Not, it's not necessarily true. So, there is no complete replacement for the stack right now. There are some developments that can be tested, can be tried out. But uh, gunning for something specific, well, we, we don't have something like that, anything like that at this, at this time. Any further questions? People in the rear? Uh, Dima, can you please tell me about interesting projects of Cyber Congress, if it's no secret, of course. Okay. The first one is search, cyber search. Something that I'm very, very, very excited about. So I talked about that. I'll keep telling that. Uh, if that decentralized chain is done not by us, and somebody else will get there and do it. And make it. Another interesting project is definitely the Academy. The third interesting project is Cyber Labs. It's a sort of a decentralized network of laboratories. So, like Valeri, Valeri has a laboratory. I control one uh, back home in Kaliningrad. And we're making various interesting open source stuff, like prototypes, purely prototypes, to see if it's going to work or not. So that laboratory has a vertical farm bot, has Skyrunner. 
and a whole lot of interesting open source things that can be printed on a 3D printer. It's also available on GitHub, by the way. So this is the project that we want to uh, pursue to address open source uh, hardware. AppQ open source extension pack is OpenVCI plus a powerful PC plus a VR helmet plus a radio that how uh, working as a combination and they well give you powers. <laughs> What do you mean about powers? Oh, all kinds, like uh, you can see in electromagnetic spectrum. Well, give me a device, I'll give you that. <laughs> What's the device? It's uh, running a webcam uh, thinking oops, with the power of your mind. So those kind of powers. Uh, jungle project, another cool project, another cool one. Well, yes, it's, it's not yet up and running, but it's a teaser. 2.0 system for space accounting. We want to come up with some concept of a next generation state, next generation government, where the property for land would not would be replaced by the property uh, or the, the title to ownership over space. Like the DAO is split and the opportunity to take it out. So ownership to land to be replaced by this. So those are interesting projects so far they're in the, in the pipeline, so just something for the soul, but very interesting ones too. Use the mic for Christ's sake. Okay, that's a nice question. It's uh, too, uh, too uh, <laughs> expensive to fight gravity on water. Okay, any further questions? Okay, so first of all, let's give a round of applause to Dima. Yes, Dima, thank you so much. So Web3, you promised that? Yeah, everybody heard about it. Yeah, yeah wait. Well, let's make a 5-10 minute break. Nobody minds. We have a bar out there. You can make use of it. For those of us who are watching us, I'll tell that you will need to click a link to the next video. So, okay, 5 minutes break. 5-10 minute tops. Thank you.